I've graded hundreds of cards with PSA over the last year, and I wanted to share with you guys my approach and my expertise with grading. I get a lot of questions about like, should I grade? What should I be grading? And we're going to talk about the whole process from A to Z, how I do it right now. Now, first up, if you're not familiar with grading, uh, what it is, is it's taking a raw card and it's putting it in a plastic, uh, hard plastic shell, um, often called a slab. And what then they assign like a numerical grade with 10 being perfect or gem mint uh, often is the term. And it gets one to 10, right? Uh, often this increases the value of the card by a lot. Um, it can depend, and there are multiple grading companies. Uh, there's a lot out there, actually. Um, there's kind of only a few big ones. We'll touch on that first. Um, first up, this is uh, PSA. It's Professional Sports Authenticators. What they do is, they started obviously with sports cards, but they currently are like the top dog as far as like monetary value goes. They are absolutely at the top. Um, so they are the number one um, for money-wise. So if, if you're wanting to make money or ha just have your cards have the most value just for your collection, uh, then PSA is the the way to go. Unfortunately, they have the, they're dominating the market and it's really no competition with a few exceptions. And I'm going to touch on those. Don't worry. So PSA, I don't have a Pokemon card currently in BGS. Um, because I cracked all mine out. Um, we can talk about that in a minute too. But uh, BGS, their slabs are kind of ugly. They're really thick. Um, but what they offer, and there's not, it's not on this um, card, but they offer subgrades um, for the different categories. There's four uh, grading categories that they grade a card on. The surface of the card, the corners, the edges, and the centering. Right, And I'll touch on all those um, shortly. But yeah, so BGS usually isn't worth it um, for Pokemon unless you're going for, they have what they call a pristine black label, which means a literally perfect card. It's very, very hard to get. Um, you'll find that PSA, because um, they don't have a pristine, like they ha uh, you can have some, some minor flaws and get a 10. We'll touch on that. But um, so yeah, if you think you can get a black label, then, then that's where BGS is the way to go as far as resale. Um, then there's CGC. Um, this is one of their older slabs. They just recently changed to a different, they don't have the blue um, label anymore, but, and I don't know actually if they do these subgrades anymore, but this is what I was talking about with CGC. So we had a nine on the centering, eight, five surface, corners were perfect and edges. So this is a good representation. And then they take like kind of the average and they give this a nine. Um, CGC also has a black label, um, 10 now. And I don't personally really grade with CGC. The value's just not really there. Um, black labels are probably the exception there as well. Um, but yeah, so monetarily, I, I don't use CGC. Then there's SGC, which for Pokemon, um, really not worth it uh, if, is, if you're going to resell. But they are very affordable if you want to just get some of your cards slabbed up. And I do like their black, the black look. I, I really actually do like that. But this video is mainly about PSA. So let's just jump back over to PSA. And so that is the grading companies. Now let's talk about why you would grade cards. There's a few, there's a few reasons. One is for reselling. Uh, I'll show you some specific examples of the raw value and then the PSA 10 value and like how crazy that is. So that's one reason. The second reason is to protect your card. If you have a very valuable card like this Giratina, or you know maybe even if it's not that valuable but it's sentimental to you, um, then you're going to want to protect that. They have um, UV protection, water protection, right? So putting it in a slab uh, is a great way to protect it long term. So um, you know there's value just in that. Then there's also collecting. It adds another level of collecting, right? You can collect um, you know, PSA 10s of a certain set or PSA 10s of a certain Pokemon or whatever your thing is, PSA 9s, right? Or it doesn't really matter, but it just adds to another level of collecting. And that can be one, interesting, and two, it can be fun. I'm not going to lie. It's really fun. The last part um, that I don't think people talk about nearly as often as they should is the authentication aspect. And uh, it is important to note that... Uh, how should I say this? Uh, well, there's no gentle way to say it. Sometimes fakes get through with any any grading company. Fake cards 
altered cards, fake autographs. Um, that's mainly in sports, but there's a lot of um, fake autograph stuff happening in the Pokemon space as well. We're not really going to dive too much into that. But for the most part, they're pretty good at making sure that a card is authentic. So if you have an expensive card, even even if you don't want to, uh, even if you don't think it's going to get a 10 or you don't even plan on selling it, but you want to make sure it's real. Maybe you pulled it, you know, it has value, um, sentimental value or dollar value to anything, right? Um, they're going to, they will not slab up a card that they don't think is authentic. So yeah, some fakes get through. It's just part of what happens. So next up, we're going to talk about how to grade and what to look for. Um, specifically, I have a few examples here. Apologize, I'm still a little sick. Um, feeling a little better, but so... I have a few cards here that I picked up um, for pretty cheap, uh, not on eBay. It was from a different website, Calm C. Um, these were under market value. But we're going to just take a look at these, um, and I'm going to show you guys what I look for. And immediately, if you're look, uh, it's going to be hard to uh, kind of get this, but I'm going to do my best, right? So the first thing you're going to want to do is to obviously take it out of the sleeve. And I'll tell you right now something that I've learned that is extremely important is... This room, it actually is darker than what it looks like on the camera, but you want to do it in a dark room with, uh, I got these lights here that are shining. You can even use your cell phone light. It works really well. PSA themselves, like the president of PSA or something, I think it was the president, I don't know. He said that that's how they grade, in a dark room with a shiny light, and I'll show you why right here. So if you look at this first mirror right here, and you want to get, you want to shine the light like on it. You can see right here, there's some scratching. Try and get it right there. See, it's pretty prominent. It goes up through them. Um, this is a problem with these IR cards, right? So they uh, often have a lot of scratching. Um, there's also a thing called a print line to look, look for. I'll see if I have any examples of a print line, but you can see also I think there's some scratching like over here. There's lots of scratching on this card, so immediately um, with this level of scratching, I would be not even looking at a 9. Sometimes uh, if you have a very, very tiny scratch, it can get by and it can still get a 10. But with this amount of scratching, 9 at the best, and I'd say more like an 8, realistically, maybe even lower, but it depends. So um, that's the surface. When you start to look at the centering, um, it's not perfect, but PSA centering is 60-40 is what it can be for a 10. And they have these, uh, it's hard to see here. I'm um, sorry, I got this the wrong way. There's lots of these centering tools available. Um, it's hard to see with the light, but you can put this on your card and it has a little chart, right? And you line up the edges. And uh, this is really great if, you, if you're if you newer to it, you can find out exactly if your card is going to meet that 60-40 requirement. I'll have a link um, to this and any of the other stuff in the description. But um, just off my eyeball, the centering's not perfect, but it's definitely, I think, probably good enough to get a 10. Now, a lot of times with Pokemon cards, um, the backs can be a problem. You can see here immediately, see this whitening right here, right here, right here. No way that's getting a 10, okay? And I even see, see if I can get it in the light. There's a scratch right here. So doing this, it really exposes the flaws. And also something that's very important to note is that this, this card could have been pulled fresh from a pack, put immediately in a penny sleeve right? That, that doesn't mean that pack fresh means 10 by any means. It doesn't mean that even like all of the cards from any run could even get tens because of the way that they're produced and packaged or even printed. Sometimes a lot of people will say, um, that like, oh, well you have to keep in mind for that print run. Like that happens more in sports cards, but like for the vintage stuff, like, oh, for that year, you know, this is a good card. And, and it's like, yeah, but that doesn't mean that any of the cards were ever tens, right? If they were printed poorly. So um, just keep that in mind. Like just because you pulled it, that that can be one of the most frustrating things. You finally pull a good card that you want to grade, and then it's not gradable. Or you know, uh, if you're looking for a ten. So yeah, this card I'd be looking at an eight at best, just based off of these whitening and scratches. Um, probably an eight. I don't think it has anything to lower it to a seven. Um, a lot of times they have this little like curve in them. You don't really have to worry about that too much. That's not really going to affect anything. Um, obviously, you don't want them curving, but um, when they put them in the slab, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, unfortunately, not gradable. Um, because we are aiming 
I am aiming for tens. And my gem rate, my 10 rate is at or slightly above like 70% um, for all my orders. So it's pretty good. Now we're probably, yeah. So you see all those scratches right there to the left of him? That's very common with these IRs. Like we're gonna talk about the Magikarp. Like this one's really scratched. So that's unfortunate, this one's scratched to hell. So this one's even worse on the scratching. The centering, um, it's not bad. Totally good. Um, same thing, look. So you got the same scratch up here. And that can be common for, and then look. So this might be a, a print line. This is a print line you can see right here. So see how this, um, where was it? Like right here, this line comes all the way up to the top. And it comes all the way through the entire card, that's a print line. It's kind of like a scratch, but you can't get it out, okay? And white dot here, uh, crease or whitening there, and I don't think that's white. I think that's just a reflection. So yeah, pretty much the same same on this guy. So that is unfortunate, but uh, that is why some of these cards have such high value because in a 10, because so many of them are not um, 10 worthy. Now this card, is going to be a little bit different and the reason is is because this is a textured card often these don't really have scratches or print lines um, on the fronts so these are usually uh, more gradable now just eyeballing the centering it looks pretty good off the start to me I'm not really seeing anything that's alarming me off the bat keep in mind it's harder for me to see I'm looking through the monitor here normally when I would assess cards I wouldn't um, be looking at that. So, okay. So immediately I'm seeing this right here. See this white, this whitening stuff like there. Yeah. So immediately already this card, in my opinion, is not going to get a 10, but you can see like, there's not really as much, um, that might be a little white. No, it came off. Okay. White dots, um, on the edges. So that's a lot better. Um, now with this, so the front of this card looks real good at first glance, and then the back just has that one spot. So if I was looking at this card, I would I would say that this is a 9 with a low chance at a 10. Because it is possible, you have to keep in mind that they grade a lot of cards a day. And this kind of stuff can slip past. So like if I was grading that, I would say no. Like let's see if we can get... You guys see that? However... I've seen lots of 10s that have flaws like that. So um, that is the risk with PSA. Also, I should have touched on this earlier. Um, one of your best friends is going to be a microfiber cloth, right? Any smudges or um, any any like whitening. You're always going to wipe away from the edges. You don't want to wipe towards the edges because you can pull and mess up those edges. So um, using a microfiber just to get a little bit of something off can be really helpful. Sometimes if you have a little smudge of something, um, you can even just do a little do a little breath on it I know it works though and wipe it off so um, this is an example of uh, I like this example I would say nine low chance out of ten so you'd have to look at the monetary value if you're looking to resell then you'd have to look at the monetary value all right next up let's see how these guys are looking so this this is an infernape um, this card's been doing good numbers in a ten this is another one of those cards that can have scratching But I'm seeing something right here on this edge. I have to see if that comes off. Let's see. No, that's not coming off. Okay, so that would be my only concern with the front so far. Um, centering, maybe a little heavier on the bottom than the top. I'd have to double check that. It doesn't look bad. Then the back. Um, see, we got a little bit of whitening down here on this corner. So this would kind of be, I'd say this is more of a solid nine with that in the back, pretty solid nine, um, very low chance at a 10. So that's kind of how these things work. Um, I've done enough where I have an eye where this is pretty much going to get a nine. I, I would bet a lot of money that this would get a nine, but there is a very low chance that this could get a 10. And last example here, haven't looked at any of these cards beforehand, by the way. Nine tails. Now, immediately, this centering to me is off. I would have to double check. 
way thicker on the left than the right and way thicker on the top than the bottom. Um, not really seeing any scratches on the surface, maybe. No, I'm not really seeing much. So, um, not bad, actually. But the centering, um, I'd have to double check. Sometimes centering like this, you know, it doesn't pass the eye test, but when you look, you hold the thing up to it, you can find that it definitely could be a, a 10. Um, but, you know, we got the trademark whitening on the corners, right? So, um, for me, I would not grade this, personally. I would say uh, that's a 9. So, that is the unfortunate truth about, like, I just bought these cards online, you know, and pff, pretty much flopped out on them for the most part. Um, you'll find that that is the most frustrating part, and what you guys can do to uh, kind of circumvent that is going to your local card shop, going to card shows, where you can look at these cards in person. That's going to help you a lot, because so many times, even in photos, people are going to lie, possibly on eBay, or you're not going to see it from the right angle. You can hide scratches with lighting, so um, you know those really aren't your best chances to get gradable cards. Um, but let's hop into a few examples here, and we're going to talk about um, a little bit more of the pricing. We're going to start off here with one of the most prominent, you know, current examples, uh, the Magikarp from Paldea. Uh, you guys can see this is TCG player. Um, this is around $125, $26 card, uh, $28 card, you know, just, just a little bit in that range, right? Um, but you can see right here, this is on eBay. You can turn $120 dollars into 600 so um you have to keep in mind like i talked about this is one of those cards the irs that can have a lot of scratches so this is a hard card to grade so that is what you have to keep in mind right um so just keep that in mind but also you have to keep in mind um there's fees associated with grading so we're going to talk about psa uh, grading right now so first off um this is the pricing currently like their normal pricing for TCG, which would be Pokemon um, cards, you know, we're looking at uh, 15 bucks a card, but you have to have and be in the collector's club. So this is where kind of it might be a little intimidating for people. It starts to get expensive, and I totally understand. Um, but 15 bucks a, a card is a lot better, um, you know, than things we've had in the past, right? So that's really good. Uh, this is a 20 card minimum. So for your average person, if you're just getting into this, that's where it can be daunting. Um, what I did to help when I was first starting was I had a buddy that we would uh, help get to 20 together, right? So and uh, and we kind of split the membership fees and everything. So that that's the best way to do it. Um, you got value bulk here. Um, you guys can just you guys can look at this or pause it, whatever. Uh, you know they have for more expensive or faster turnaround times, like 10 business days, right? So this is 45 business days. Um, lately, they've been faster than that, but they have been known to have slowdowns. So, um, but they've rarely ramped up lately. So I don't think that's going to be a problem uh, moving forward. But yeah, you can spend a lot, like 500 bucks to grade a card. Um, with this, this doesn't really happen with Pokemon too much, um, unless you have like a Shadowless first edition Zard or something crazy. But um, yeah, most of, you, most of us are going to be in here. Um, keep in mind that for um they do upcharge this is an unfortunate thing with psa like um see the the declared value is 200 or less so if i was to send in this giratina uh, which raw is over that price but it gets especially if it gets a 10 um they're going to upcharge me to possibly this or this price at least so um not the biggest fan of how they do that but that is something that they do so it's just you have to play their game unfortunately uh, next up, this is mostly sports, but sometimes they have the Pokemon stuff kind of slides in here. They have these grading specials that rotate like every month, every few months. So if you also want to grade some uh, football cards, you know, they have lower pricing on that. A lot of the times these have lower minimums. So these are 10 card minimums. So keep that in mind. So the membership. So this is kind of cool and kind of not cool. I'm going to talk about why. So... To get that lower pricing, you have to pay 150 a year. So you have to be kind of grading a decent amount to make this worth it, first off, right? So that's, you know, that people, a lot of people don't like that, and I get it. Um, but you get access to the month, you get access to the monthly grading specials, um, obviously, and then the bulk grading um, prices. But um, what has turned out to be really cool is the PSA magazine, right? And you get, you do get $120 of credit for Loop and 64 Fanatics. 
you get more if you get the premium but and i don't do the premium i'm on the standard personally the magazine has ended up to be kind of cool actually and what i have gotten uh and a lot of you guys might be familiar with this um the latest issue uh, the so you can pick like sports or tcg um for the magazine um but they had a exclusive card um this is a monkey d luffy uh one piece card i'm gonna look i haven't looked at this it's still in the thing i might send it to get graded um but yeah so you this card at the time when it first came out was you could sell this for like 200 bucks so that was paying for your membership right there now that's not always going to be the case but also some of the magazines that they do are numbered you can get numbered copies you can get numbered copies of these magazines that are worth a lot of money as well um so i got the uh mickey mouse last before this one it was a gold i numbered out of 500 so that was kind of cool um, I didn't sell it. I think I have it listed on eBay, but um, I'm not currently really planning on selling it. So I just think it's kind of cool to have. Um, then the last thing to really touch on is, uh, and it's not really a, it's, it's not an important thing, but we'll talk about. So this, um, car, this is called a card saver. It's different than uh, a top loader. Like this is a top loader. So the only thing when you go to send in your orders, um, they want them, you just put it in a penny sleeve and put it in this, and then you put them in the order um, that you uh, submitted them in. And you're going to want to just make sure you do that, otherwise you're going to get charged if it's in the wrong order. It's not that hard, but it is a little bit annoying. You put the cards in there, um, you put cardboard on each side, put a rubber band around it, put it in a box with bubble wrap, send it off to them. Um, so yeah, that kind of pretty much summarizes, like, for the most part... Um, what to grade, how to grade, why to grade. Um, there is also, I, I did make a video on this in the past. Um, you guys can go back and take a look at it. Um, there are card cleaning kits out there. Now, those can remove some of those scratches. So just keep that in mind. Oh, I'm not going to dive into that in this video, but um, it is possible. So keep that in mind. That's going to do it for this one, guys. I got to, my throat's killing me. Uh, coughing too much. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys enjoyed this, uh, video. If you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of, uh, going over this. And if you want me to go over the other grading companies, like more specifically, let me know. I can make detailed videos on that. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember.